Oof. Hey, I'm moving into my new house and to celebrate, I bought a pony keg. A couple of my friends are coming over later tonight to enjoy it, but we gotta make sure it doesn't get too warm, so we're gonna go put it on ice. I don't think that's gonna cut it. But wait a second. I am Dr. D Flow. So I'm going to over engineer the shit out of this and we're gonna build the Kegerator. Dr. D Flow. Kegerator. Keg plus refrigerator. We have the keg, but now we need the refrigerator. So we require three things a container, a cooling system. We also need a way to access the beer when it's in the container without having to remove the keg because the keg is very heavy. So we went the unique route. We decided to go with a Jack Daniels barrel for the enclosure and it's just, it's full of character and it's awesome as is. I don't have to refinish it or do anything to it. Now to access the beer from the barrel, we're gonna use this beer tower. It's an old Murphy's Irish Stout beer tower. We're going with brass for a little bit of pop. See the front of it. But for the cooling system, originally I was thinking I was just gonna use a mini fridge and put the keg in there and then cut a hole and stick the beer tower on top. But again, that really didn't go match the aesthetic I was trying to achieve. So I then was just gonna take the cooling system out of the mini fridge, but I was really worried about making the evaporator and condenser coils fit the form factor of a barrel. So I've decided to go the less efficient route, but more practical for our case, which is thermoelectric cooling. The heart of thermoelectric cooling is the Peltier heat pump. In short, applying a voltage to the unique semiconductors located in a Peltier plate creates a temperature difference across the two sides of the plate, resulting in a hot side and a cold side. I was seeing about 70 degrees Fahrenheit difference between the hot and cold side. Perfect for keeping beer cold. This technology is remarkably simple and requires little maintenance. However, the main drawback of thermoelectric cooling is efficiency, which is at about 25% compared to that of vapor compression typical in a fridge. I used eight Peltier plates, which consumed a staggering 400 watts, quadruple the wattage of commercial small form kegerators. I was willing to sacrifice efficiency for simplicity because the kegerator will only be in use every now and then and the keg comes cold. So we just need to prolong its coldness. I isolated the cold from the hot side by using wood and insulation. The hot side has much larger heat sinks because they need to dissipate the heat being moved in addition to the heat generated from power consumption. I added blower fans to the cold side to promote further heat exchange. The wiring was straightforward. Terminal blocks made it easy to supply 12 volts to all components. I used 12 gauge wire from the terminal blocks to the power supply because of the large current draw. So we just finished the cooler. Now we need to open up the barrel so that we can fit the cooler and the keg inside of it. Before we get started, let's talk about the anatomy of a barrel. Now, these wooden strips are called staves and they want to splinter outwards, but they're held in via compression by these hoops. And that's what eventually allows for the seal to prevent the whiskey from leaking out of the barrel. Now, there's three types of hoops. You have the head, quarter, and bilge hoops. And we need to cut into these hoops along with the staves in order to allow us to create a door to put the keg in. But we also need to be able to put the cooling system in as well, so this door is going to be pretty big. Remember, the barrel is held together by compression uh, between the staves and the hoops. And if we start cutting out these staves in order to create a door, then this compression fitting is no longer going to work. So we need to secure the hoops uh, to the barrel either through T-nails or a carriage bolt. I ended up using self-tapping screws to secure the staves to the hoops. The new screws were too shiny, so I used gray spray paint to fit the rustic theme. Securing the staves took a bit of time because pilot holes were needed. The painted screws matched perfectly with the hoops. This is going to be the hardest part of the build. We have to cut out the door, um, and due to the curvature of the barrel, we have to use a plunge cut. And if we mess this up, we're pretty much uh, up a creek without a paddle. I use the edge of the quarter hoop as a guide for cutting the door. Only two cuts are needed, at the top and bottom of the barrel. My door was seven staves wide. I used a hacksaw to cut through the bilge hoops at the edge of the door. But a Dremel tool would have worked better. <laughs> there we go. 
<laughs> so we should have secured. So we probably should have sec secured these. So let's secure this real quick. Originally, I did not secure the stage that would be part of the door because I wanted to make sure that the stage would be removable. But I regretted this decision because the staves lost some of the curvature after the hoop was cut. It's gonna be a little wet on the inside, just by the way. Oh, this is black. <laughs> you see anything in there? No, <laughs> of course not. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's heavy. It smells so good. Inside of my barrel is black because it has been charred by the distillery before filling the barrel with whiskey. Charring plays a more complicated role in the taste of whiskey than you would think. I will drop a link in the description about charring. The barrel is round, but my cooling system mount is flat. So I used angle standoffs to provide a flat surface to attach the cooling system. I used pocket holes to attach the standoffs to the barrel. The power supply fits snugly underneath. We just finished insulating uh, the barrel and this resulted in an isolation between the cold and the hot side. Everything's working and if we come around to the back, we drilled these holes to allow the hot side to passively vent. Unfortunately, the hot side is about six degrees hotter than ambient temperature, which is too hot because remember in thermoelectric cooling, temperature gradient is very important. So the passive cooling is not enough. We need to add in some active cooling, which we're gonna do with these massive three amp server fans, which are capable of high volumes of airflow. With the addition of these two fans, the hot side's temperature dropped by 30 degrees. Thanks for watching part one of my kegerator video. In the next video, we will work on the plumbing and then in the third and final video, we will put the door on and install more insulation before testing the effectiveness of my cooling system and enjoying the finished product. As always, supplies and more information are located on my website. I'm Dr. Deflo. See you guys next week.